was rigged in the favor of the Chiefs, which, hey, there's always thoughts and opinions about rigging games in the NFL. It happens sometimes, but, you know, watching this game, uh, the Dolphins were just not ready for the Chiefs at all. You can maybe blame it on the weather, maybe just the, I don't know, the tension of the game was really high going up against the, against the, the, the defending Super Bowl champions, but I kind of saw it in, in the game against the Buffalo Bills that the Dolphins had for their last game. They just don't really have that it factor. They don't have that pizzazz, the swag to, in my opinion, really push and contend. Now they do have a really solid team, the regular season of the NFL, blah, blah, blah. That's great and dandy. But I still don't feel like they have that like little spark that really makes them a great playoff team like some of the other teams. Like, I'm going to admit it, the Kansas City Chiefs do seem to find. But I'm not saying Kansas City is that great or anything. They also kind of had an iffy game. Um, Dua threw for about 200 yards, had a touchdown, an interception, and two sacks, having a QB rating of a 64. Yikes. Patrick Mahomes threw for 262 yards, having only one touchdown. Again, like I said, this Kansas City Chiefs team also didn't look that great. QB rating of an 84. So, in my opinion, decent to good Kansas City game and a just poor effort from the Dolphins. Now you could off, you argue calls being made and, you know, the weather and blah, 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 which I'll give it to you, but it just seemed like this Dolphin team was just not ready for this game. In my opinion, Kansas City moving on, as I predicted. And, and in the next game, um, the Green Bay Packers against the Dallas Dallas, 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 Dallas Cowboys. Oh, my goodness. Um, Green Bay Packers ended up winning this game 48-32, to putting up a 20-point quarter. A 20-point quarter. That is absolutely insane from a Green Bay Packer team that was struggling for life at points in the NFL season, going in and putting a 20-point quarter on a team that some people said could win it all. Um, Jordan Love threw 16 for 21, 270 yards on three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Again, a great showing for a young quarterback. These young quarterbacks, man, that are in the, in the league right now are just super impressive. A QB rating of 157. Dak Prescott threw for 41 for 60. He threw 60 passes that game. Oh my God. Uh, threw for 400 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, four sacks. QB rating of about a 90. So still a pretty, a pretty big difference, not gonna lie. And uh, yeah, honestly, again, this game just didn't really look great for Dallas, even in their first handful of plays in the first quarter, which the first quarter was seven to nothing for the Packers, not a crazy upset. And then just the second quarter, they just looked just absolutely washed. They just couldn't do anything. And then the second half comes out, and again, they get outscored 14 to nine. Like, come on, you come out at the halftime as a competitive playoff-driven team, and you blow it against the team that, again, was just super struggling at this point in time in this year. I said it in my video, talking about the playoffs. Don't be surprised if the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboy, and they cowboyed, they blew it, absolutely. People are saying they should sell the team. People are saying they should fire their head coach, which probably should be the first option. And there's obviously an upper people saying they should tear the team out, trade Dak Prescott, and completely rebuild. Which might also be a possibility. I guess we'll have to see. Pretty crazy. Uh, next game we had was uh, the Rams against the Lions. Really good game. Lions ended up winning 24-23. Didn't really surprise me. A lot of people were picking this as an upset win for the Rams. I was just going for the Rams, and I was pretty close, so I can't say I was. it was a bad choice on my part. Um, it was a pretty close game, very fun game. Um, I liked watching 
this game a lot. It seemed pretty doom and gloom for the Rams in the first quarter, coming back in the second quarter, having a pretty good second half, but just couldn't get it done. Um, people are arguing that the, the Lions were playing, you know, a little bit dirty in this game. Uh, they were playing pretty rough, but it's the NFL playoffs. What do you expect? But there were some pretty nasty hits in this game, so take that as you will. But I like the Lions. I like them going on. I like Jared Goff um, for sure, so that might be a team I'm, I'm rooting for in the uh, next upcoming weeks of NFL playoff games. Shout out to, the, to, to Detroit, I think, uh, breaking the longest um, drought for a playoff win in the NFL. I think the next team I think I remember seeing was the Dolphins having the next longest playoff drought, which... Sorry, Dolphin fans, not getting that one, apparently. Um, but great game, really close, 24-23. to 23. Um, Rams could have won it, Lions could have won it, Rams ended up losing. Uh, then the Monday games were kind of bland and boring, in my opinion. Steelers against the Bills. Of course, everyone predicted, yes, it happened, Bills blew out the Steelers. Steelers is a team that's not very ready, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Um, Bills coming out scoring up 14 to nothing against the Bills, oh, sorry, against the Steelers in the first quarter, and the game kind of went back and forth, back and forth, but when you're going back and forth against a team that already put up 14 points in a quarter, kind of hard to come back from that, but it was pretty competitive up until that point, but still. Um, Josh Allen threw for 200 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, two sacks, QB rating of 121. Pretty good for Josh Allen and this washed Bills team, which yes, a lot of people are saying this Bills team was washed. They're definitely playing themselves into a good rhythm, and they have been for quite some time now. And now the Bills are going up against their rival of the Kansas City Chiefs. I think they play in Kansas City, if I can think correctly. If not, then in Buffalo is going to be a nightmare because, God, it looks so cold over there right now. But, wow. Bills in Kansas City. That's a toss-up game. Uh, I, I talked about that in my video last week. It's a game that anything can really happen. We'll talk about it, though, in a, in, a, in a little bit. We have one more game to get to, which is the Buccaneers against the Eagles. Now, everyone, everyone, everyone and their mama was saying, this is an upset game. This is an upset game. Jake, this is an upset game. And I thought, you know what, maybe, maybe the Eagles could do something. I mean, the Buccaneers' starting quarterback is Baker Mayfield. I know that just the players of the Eagles a little bit, not the Eagles, um, blew it. Um, and, 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 and in a, a horrible fashion, losing 32-9, to nine, only scoring in one quarter. They scored nine points in the second quarter, and that was it. That was the game for the Eagles. I could not imagine the absolute just you, you, you feeling I would have if I was an Eagles fan. Um, even not being an Eagles fan, I feel like what the heck? They were a top team the entire year. I think they only lost like one game in the span of like two months, three months, and then just the end of the season collapsed for them. It's, I, 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 I don't know if I've really have ever seen something like that again. I don't really pay attention too much to football all that much um, in the past, but I cannot think of a sort of downfall that was played out like that. That was wild, but uh, shout out to the Bucks, shout out to Baker Mayfield. Uh, you guys now get to play um, the 49ers as a reward, I think, or I think the Packers do, actually. One of those teams that snuck by uh, get to play the 49ers, which if one of those teams beat the 49ers in the, in the second round, I will scream into this microphone. That would be absolutely insane. But yeah, Eagles, my god, um, Jalen Hurts, pretty good game. Defense, though, lackluster for sure. When you have Baker Mayfield having a QB rating of 120, uh, having three touchdowns and no interceptions, something's, some, something's up. But shout out to Baker Mayfield. Okay. Now, taking a look at the second round um, NFL um, playoff. Do you guys like that? 
that sound, by the way. Like the little typing, typing, typing sounds. I like it. Anyways, updated bracket here. So, we have the Green Bay Packers and the 49ers in the NFC going up against the Tampa... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Green Bay Packers going up against the 49ers. And then the other matchup is the Lions going up against the Buccaneers. Over in the AFC, we have the Texans going up against the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Buffalo Bills. Two games here that really intrigue me. Two games here that should be, you know, taken very, you know, handed to one team. Of course, the games I'm talking about are the Packers and the 49ers and the Ravens against the Texans. Those are the number one seeded teams, in my opinion, are head and shoulders above those other teams. Now you can say, oh, Jake, blah, 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 this, this, that. Fine, that's cool. Just in my opinion, I feel like these teams are just way better than the other ones. So, of course, I'm going to be taking the 49ers uh, beating the Packers. Is there a way? Uh, I mean, injuries, knock on wood, is the only thing I think about for the 49ers. They are just cursed with that sort of stuff. So I'll knock on wood 10 million times for them. But they usually have pretty bad luck, uh, even when it comes to the postseason, when it comes to those kind of, kind of things. And Jordan loved having looked really good uh, in his game against the, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, but we'll see if they can do that with the 49ers, a crazy defense. And then for Baltimore and Houston, I mean, it's a young team that's riding on a good sort of play the past couple of weeks. And uh, will it stop in Baltimore? You would think so, right? Baltimore has just been such an up team. But people have stated before in the past that uh, Baltimore is extremely wishy-washy. Wishy-washy. Wishy-washy in their postseason history. Will history repeat itself? We'll have to see. But I'm picking Baltimore and the 49ers. Now, the Buccaneer Lion game, the Kansas City Chief Bills game. Those ones kind of intrigue me. Um, for the Buccaneer Lions game, uh, of course, the, the the team that's favored in the Lions is definitely a, a pretty heavy favorite in my opinion. And you know, obviously with them having Jared Goff, one of my favorite players, and pretty fun Cinderella kind of story, having a season that, at least in my opinion, I never saw really happening. Going up against this Buccaneers team that took out the Philadelphia Eagles, which for some people is an easy win. Some people say it's a lot more challenging than that. Don't be surprised if the Buccaneers win this game. If they did, that would be absolutely insane. But I'm picking the favorites of the Lions to move on. Is this a game that could be an upset? Absolutely yes. If that team can game plan pretty well against the Eagles, I think they could do the same thing against the, the Lions, in my opinion. So, I guess we'll just have to see. And then for the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills, that is also a toss-up game. Um, both these teams a year or two ago were, you know, title battling teams, and now they're kind of iffy, wishy-washy, kind of on. I don't want to say their last legs, but definitely, you know, the dynasties of these two teams are almost played out to their fullest extent. You know, you can't really peak higher than the, the Chiefs have. And the Bills are a people that have capped out for the past couple years already. Man, the Bills have been playing so well as of lately, the past handful of weeks. And, you know, Kansas City has been up and down this entire year, but it's still played to a pretty good level. And, uh, and quite honestly, man, I can't. I, I cannot pick a winner. I really have no idea. Right now, currently, the Buffalo Bills are the um, favorites to win. This game is actually going to be played in Buffalo, which gives, I guess, the edge to the Buffalo Bills. I mean, the money line for this game is almost 50-50. Um, the stats are pretty in the favor of, I guess, Buffalo, but still pretty relatively close. It's going to be a close game. I predicted that Kansas City would win this game. I did predict, by the way, this uh, perfectly, this side of the bracket, I guess you could say. I don't know. I just, I, can I say a toss-up? Like, literally, I don't know. I do not know. But either way, any one of those teams making it past goes up against the Baltimore Ravens, which, again, no doubt they're going to beat. Well, no doubt they're going to beat the Houston Texans. We'll have to wait and see. But I still don't think either one of the Chiefs
Ravens and again with the Lions going up against the 49ers in the NFC I don't really see um, either of them being the number one seeded teams in either one of the conferences I do still think it is going to be a 49er Baltimore Raven Super Bowl if anything I'll probably say the 49ers are the only team I can knock on wood not trying to jinx them are a lock to make it to the Super Bowl I think they are just better than the Lions could they lose yes of course but again the Lions could very easily lose to the Buccaneers, especially how they're playing right now, so, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me uh, at all, but the 49ers, I think, are a team I'm pretty confident in, especially now with the, the Packers moving on, not having to worry about sort of any other matchup like that, I think they can get past the, the Green Packers, maybe, but still, I think it's still going to be a 49er Baltimore Raven Super Bowl, if not, I mean, Kansas City would be interesting, but in my opinion, man, with the Bills having a home field advantage against the Kansas City Chiefs, that might be kind of a significant feel, but in my opinion, that's going to be like a one-score game. It's going to be like a one-touchdown game. You know, maybe Patrick Mahomes' last drive of the game. Got to see what he can do with the ball. It's going to be really close, but I still have the 49ers winning it all in the Super Bowl. Nothing has really changed about my feeling about that. Um, did some of the teams play better than I thought? Yes, of course. Um, you know, the Buccaneers, uh, the Texans played very well, but again, they're going up against some pretty heavy hitters. You know, the Buccaneers against the Lions, I'm giving them a little bit more hope, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty interested to, to really see what happens, but maybe the Bills will probably, probably beat the Kansas City Chiefs, so moving on, but still losing to the, to the Ravens in the, in the championship game. So yeah, nothing really changed too much besides just the outcomes of some of the games. Now, very fun. Let's move on to some NBA talk. Um, unless there's anything else I can talk about for the NFL. I don't think so. I just wanted to talk um, the playoff, I guess, a breakdown. Now, moving on to the um, NBA. Go and take a look at the NBA standings, which, again, we haven't taken a look at it in quite some time. Not sure if anything's going to be too different or significant, but I do like just to take a look in a rundown of the standings. Taking a look, sorry by the way if you can hear the train in the background. Um, taking a look at the Eastern Conference first. We have here in first place of the NBA Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics in the number one seed still to this day. Two seed are the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Three seed are the Philadelphia 76ers. Fourth seeded are the Cleveland Cavaliers. Five is Miami. Six are the Pacers. Seven are the Knicks. Eight are the Magic. Oh, God. Uh, nine are the Bulls. Ten are the Nets. Eleven are the Atlanta Hawks. Twelve is the Toronto Raptors. Thirteen, Hornets. Fourteen, Wizards. And fifteenth, we have your boys' favorite team. No, uh, we have the Detroit Pistons. Nothing really do. Um, blaring when it comes to the standings. Of course, I said, oh God, to the Orlando Magic, because yes, the Orlando Magic at one point in time were, I think, as high as the three seed or the four seed just a couple weeks ago, and, uh, you know, not to jinx the Magic, but I did say they were going to fall. Um, did I think they were going to fall this far? No, I thought they were going to be hovering around, you know, five, six, at least seven, they are right now in the 8th spot, uh, a handful of games though above the um, Chicago Bulls, and I think they'll stay in that sort of 7-8 range right now, but they can still batter with like teams like the Pacers who are without Tyrese Halliburton right now, and maybe try to sneak up in the standings a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more, but uh, yeah, um, number one seeded team, Boston Celtics, nothing changed there, they were uh, my favorites to um, win the East my favorites to win the championship uh, before the season even started and nothing has changed i think they are still the best team in the east i think they'll probably win the nba championship i guessed it you can go back look at the footage look at the footage i did state that but it looked like it's coming true it was interesting though and i'll talk about it a little bit in this video about the trade rumors and stuff it looks like they're players and even trying to um improve their team and roster even more than what they already have, which is crazy because they arguably have the best starting five um, in the NBA right now with Drew Holiday, um, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and uh, Kristaps Porzingis. And that is a terrifying starting five. That's really tough. So uh, I'm really excited to see if that team does even improve because if they do, 
which is what we were looking for for, I guess, this entire season is that flip of the switch of, you know, new head coach, new star player, new team players finally coming together and meshing well in this Milwaukee team. And it looks like it's coming up right now, which is cool to see. So I'm really excited to see that. But, you know, are they still better than, you know, Boston in a seven game series? I'm still not very confident in that. Um, anything else? Oh, the Cavaliers are now fourth in the NBA's Eastern Conference, kind of having a skid of, I think, being as low as the seventh seed a couple weeks ago to now being a top four team, having home field, home field, home court advantage right now if the playoffs started today. Um, they're definitely playing a lot better. Um, obviously, there's still the hovering cloud of what's going to happen with the Donovan Mitchell. I think he's probably going to stay there for the entire year and probably this offseason if the Cavaliers have like a complete disgrace of an offseason, or sorry, postseason, maybe losing the first round again, then I could see maybe Donovan leave, uh, Donovan leaving. Um, again, Tyrese Halliburton and not on the Pacers for the next couple of games, maybe another week or two. Kind of scary about this injury. Uh, then we have the Knicks down at seven, but really... The Knicks are only one game behind fourth and three games. Wait, sorry. Uh, yeah, three games behind third place. So, you know, it's a very tight race between three, pretty much down to eight. There's only like a four, three game span between all those chunks of teams. Kind of exciting. Um, really cool to see how they've been playing with OG and Anobi on the squad. You know, do I still think they could have gotten like a significant... Maybe not a star, but an all-star with, you know, Emmanuel Quickly, R.J. Barry, and a couple first-round picks. Yes, I think they could have gotten, like, a Pascal Siakam type of player. Not Pascal Siakam the player, but, like, a player like that. Like, another all-star. But, uh, you know, I'm not really sure what all-stars are really available unless they wanted to trade that for, like, Zach Levine or something. But that's not really worth Zach Levine. But I still don't think those players were really worth OG. But, uh... I mean, both the teams, I see why they did the trade. It makes sense, but still, it just doesn't feel like a, a fully potential trade package was put together, in my opinion, but still not bad. And even for the, the, the Raptors, on a four-game losing streak, Emmanuel quickly and RJ have looked pretty good on that team. That team's going to go into a rebuild, probably trading Pascal Siakam in the next handful of weeks or days. Kind of exciting. Anything else to really talk about? Not really. Um, we have the Western Conference now. Number one team in the West, still the Minnesota Timberwolves, who do not have the number one record in the NBA anymore. That is actually going to the Boston Celtics now, but still number one in the in the West. Oklahoma City Thunder are the two seed. Number three, we have the Denver Nuggets for the Clippers. Kind of exciting there. Five, we have the Kings. Six, the Mavericks. Seven, the Pelicans. Eight, the Suns. Nine, the Jazz. Ten, the Lakers. Eleven, we have the Houston Rockets. Twelve, Golden State Warriors. Two-game losing streak. We'll talk about it. Thirteen, we have the Grizzlies. Fourteen, the Portland Trailblazers. And fifteen, we have the San Antonio Spurs. Now, um... Yeah, Minnesota still on top of the Western Conference, looking like teams like the Thunder and the Nuggets are finally starting to catch up to this team. I'm not sure why. I don't know if that team has injury or just bad play, tougher matchups, but they're starting to, to level out. I think the Minnesota Timberwolves, they had a very um, fiery streak to start the year, and I still think they're going to be a significant playoff team, but again... You know, a team's first year of being a really heavily competitive team. People are already talking about them being a contender for the title. I guess you kind of have to respect that, but I still wouldn't trust them against, like, a Denver team in the playoffs. Just in my opinion. Um, same thing going for the Thunder. Love that the Thunder are playing well. They can definitely be the number one seed in the Western Conference. 
their squad being, I think, a two seed as well going into the playoffs. And as soon as they match up against a, again, title veteran playoff led team, they crumble. And I think that is what would probably happen in a Thunder matchup against, again, a Denver Nugget team in the second round or some sort of big time significant team like that, like the LA Clippers. I think that could also be a possibility. Just a team that's more ready for a title than just a good regular season equals good playoff run. It, it kind of is hard to get both of those together, especially for, again, a young team. A young team. A very, 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 very young team. Their second best player is literally a rookie, so we'll have to see what happens with them in the playoffs. Um, the Clippers having some good play, being the fourth seeded now. They just lose their most recent matchup as the recording of this video. Anything else? Um, the Utah Jazz right now are on a six-game winning streak. I think that might be the biggest winning streak in the NBA. It is. Shout out to the Utah Jazz. Um, yeah, now into the uh, playoff race, I guess, for the Western Conference. I wouldn't really say with all too much significance, but that's also because the, the Golden State Warriors are still on the downfall, which, again, no offense, love me some Steph Curry, love me some Clay Thompson, but uh, the fact that Portland has the Warriors pick this year, I think it's a top four protected. I'm kind of rooting for the downfall of the Golden State Warriors just a little bit. It would be really cool to see Portland have two top ten picks in the draft this year. Um, yeah, that'd be nice, but you know, the Warriors are struggling. I think Draymond Green uh, just came back from his um, hiatus, their most recent game against the Memphis Grizzlies, which the Memphis Grizzlies are now without John Moran for the entire year. And they still lost against that Memphis Grizzly team. So that Warrior squad is just playing with no heart, no energy, no effort. They just are a dying star right now. They are just imploding. That team, um, in my opinion, has probably... Does this team even last next season? I think something happens to this team by next season, whether it's Clay retiring, Draymond retiring, one of them getting traded, signing with a new team. I feel like definitely the by next season, this, this Warrior team is going to be hitting that hard rebuild button, and Steph Curry is just going to ride this contract out for the rest of his career, and probably end up retiring in the next three to five years, which is really sad, but, you know, if he's not competing, and he's not going to jump ship to a new team, because, again, Steph Curry is the greatest warrior in their team's history, it's not like Steph Curry's going to go to the, to, the, to, the, to the Thunder and be the next guard next to SGA, like, that's just not going to happen, so... Um, it seems like this team might just ride out into the sunset for the next couple years, in my opinion. Um, and then, anything else I'm going to talk about? Oh, the, the Blazers, I guess, for Blazer fans, I guess. Um, I don't know why I said that twice. Um, yeah, Portland sucks. Um, definitely some of the worst play I've ever seen from a Portland Trail Blazer team, and I was around during J.J. Hickson, Raymond Felton, Marcus Camby, Portland Trailblazer era. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, that era was really rough. This seems pretty bad as well. With a team that is just way, 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 way too talented to be playing the way they have been. Absolute disgrace. And um, in my opinion, probably falls on the coaching of Chauncey Billups. I have never seen a coach poorly use such good players like Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant and you can even argue some of the other players in Portland they just it just seems like he has no idea what he's doing there's never any play calling the motion of the team on the ball and off the ball is disgusting pretty non-existent it's almost like they're trying to play the same style they did with Damian Lillard but with no one on the same level as a Damian Lillard, and it is disgusting. Uh, the defense is also terrible. Um, this team has like two players on it that can defend, kind of, and they are some of the youngest players on the team, so the um, team just doesn't really have any heart, any effort. They know they're bad, they're gonna be bad, and there's just no play in them. Uh, also, Shaden Sharp, if 
Kuzma, Jonathan Kaminga, Pascal Siakam, uh, Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan, um, a handful of other players that probably may, maybe will, maybe not be traded. Seems like here a lot of teams are already throwing out into the rumor mill their ass for teams already rumored. Zach Levine is focused on games and not trying to be traded, but the asking price of Zach Levine has already been set to two first round picks. Another team already set in stone with their, uh, I guess, ask two first round picks for Kyle Kuzma as well as been reported uh, by NBC Sports. Two first round picks for Kyle Kuzma. I mean, I guess if you are a title contending team, two first round picks isn't anything crazy, but if you're a team like, you know, the Lakers who have no first round picks or the Milwaukee Bucks who have no first round picks, it's kind of hard to get a player like that, but I don't really see any team sort of going on a whim to get Kyle Kuzma unless you're a team that's already kind of built who just needs a little extra oomph. Like, again, I think Kyle Kuzma going back to L.A. would be awesome because the Lakers definitely need a little offensive punch to their, to their team. Lakers don't really have much to offer when it comes to, to first round picks. Then you also have DeJounte Murray and again, Hawks are asking two first round picks for DeJounte Murray. It seems like that's the ask for near fringe young all-stars is two first round picks. Two first round picks and uh, I know the Spurs have been a name that's been tied to getting back um, DeJounte Murray, which is actually kind of crazy. I'd rather just see the Spurs just draft a point guard to sort of mesh and build with Wemby than having a player already established like DeJounte Murray having to cater to someone like Victor. I know they see a guard and maybe they get like, I don't know, maybe they do get the number one pick, maybe a top five pick and just draft the best point guard available in this year's upcoming draft. I think that's, that's in my opinion, the move I would like to see. Or they do just get like a veteran point guard who can hit uh, Victor Wembanyama develop now and just strike at getting um, DeJounte, but like trading first round picks for a team that definitely needs first round picks doesn't really seem like a very viable, uh, smart option in my opinion. Um, anything else? Anything else? There's even a report, I'm seeing an article that DeJounte Murray would welcome back the Spurs organization. So that's kind of interesting. You'd actually wouldn't mind, I guess, going back to uh, to the Spurs. Pretty wild. Another team sort of connected with DeJounte is, of course, the LA Lakers, which I don't think is a very, uh, very realistic uh, destination. Then, of course, we have the uh, Pascal Siakam scenario going on with the Toronto Raptors, which, excuse me, thank God that is finally happening. Uh, it is definitely uh, two years ago. It should have happened. It should have happened as soon as they started drafting, you know, Scotty Barnes and players like that. They should have traded away Pascal Siakam and probably could have gotten a significantly, a significantly better offer than what they got now with Pascal Siakam coming off of a, you know, he's a free agent next year and no one's going to want to take the risk. He's also, again, like two, three years older now. Um, he's still a very good player, but, you know, teams aren't going to give up a lot for a player that they could have gotten a couple years ago for whatever. Um, but they're finally trading him. Hopefully they actually do trade him and not just let him walk for nothing. If this Toronto Raptors team if this Toronto Raptors team lets Pascal Siakam walk for nothing, I will scream into the microphone for all of the Toronto Raptors fans out there. I feel your pain. But the team that's been very significantly heavy in the conversation with Pascal has, of course, been the Sacramento Kings. Do I think it's very viable? No. Uh, I don't think the Kings really want to give up too much of their depth that they're going to have to give up to get a guy like Pascal Siakam because Pascal Siakam's contract is massive and trying to match a contract with that would just be too tough to sense. I mean, Pascal Siakam has already won an NBA championship. He's already been on a pretty great team with Kawhi Leonard back in 2019. Um, he doesn't need to be on a title contender. He can just get the bag and play till the end of his career. So, can have to see what happens with that. Um, there's, you know, uh, Jeremy Grant on the Portland Trailblazers, but I don't think that's going to be really happening. Um, Pacers shopping Buddy Heald for a first-round pick. That could definitely happen. Um, against Spider Mitchell. Spider, Spider, Spider Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. I don't think it's really going anywhere. 
get some real rumors and then obviously the night of, of the trade deadline that's where the big explosion happens but yeah really cool now we're at the point of this video of these asmr whisper rambles where i really run out of ideas to whisper about of course i love talking basketball football is exciting uh nowadays when it comes to you know what's going on but uh now nah, i don't really know what to talk about uh, of course people love talking about the premier league the premier league which yes we'll get into some football football soccer talk now which is definitely really fun i do love taking a look at sort of the things going on in the premier league the premier league let's actually see their next set of premier league games are actually set for saturday saturday january 20th with games like crystal palace playing arsenal which of course um arsenal um definitely heavily favored to win that game of course um then that sunday the 21st um, we have Bournemouth against Liverpool. Nothing too crazy of games there. When's like the next like really big matchup game? Oh, actually, we have a. It looks like we have a. Uh, a, a a sort of uh, playoff setting going on in the Premier League. Starting Tuesday, January thirtieth, we have the round of twenty-two in the Premier League, which is kind of exciting. Is the Premier League like a cup or? championship going on sometime soon because yeah it says here premier league round of 22 we have a couple of matchups there that looks pretty fun someone is gonna have to help me out <laughs> with what's going on there with some sort of a um um um, um playoff type of thing tournament going on i would definitely love love to know but taking a look at the standings right now for the um premier league we have Liverpool in first place, having 13 wins, 6 draw, and only 1 loss on the season. That's actually really cool. Having a total of 45 points on the season, with Man City being in second with also 13 wins, 4 draws, and 3 losses. 3 losses. 3 losses. 3 losses. Um, having a, a 43 point there. Then you have uh, Villa, Arsenal, Tottenham, West Ham, all kind of being in there. Well, not really West Ham, but those other two teams um, being in the mix there for the uh, for the Champions League. Um, uh, we have Man City in seventh, Chelsea going down to ninth. They've been struggling recently. Um, Fulham, Crystal Palace, Everton being seventeenth, and then a couple of the regulation teams like uh, London Town and, and Burnley. <laughs> Yikes. That's still really sad that teams can just get booted out of their league, and that's pretty wild. But yeah, Liverpool still being in first. Um, I'm not sure if these are up to date or not with the Champions League. The next leg of the Champions League matches go on in February. So February 13th are the next um, Champions League games, so they're not going to be for quite some time, which kind of sucks. Like, even all the way in March, they're not going to be really any game so definitely gonna be a while but like you know man city plays copenhagen february 13th um psg plays real so sedad so sedad something like that but there's the champions league but i'm still not really sure how the champions league really even works i know you know the best teams in other leagues go into the champions league and the champions league is like maybe the most significant uh maybe european or even just football cup that's out there um like you have uh arsenal leading group b right now with teams like psv lens and savea 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 um in that group as well anything else you have dornmouth psg milan and newcastle being in group f that seems like a pretty nice squad then of course you have man city being the, the leader in group g of course man city being an absolute dominant team last year uh, it seems like they're doing pretty good again this year but yeah um really excited to see some i guess there is like a tournament play happening in in the, in the champ not the champions well obviously the champions like in the premier league let me know maybe i'll, I'll cover it for for a video i'd definitely love to know a little bit more um about that you guys know i was really heavily involved in the uh, world cup a couple years ago i talked a little bit at, about the um was the yeah, it was the Champions League final. I made a video talking about the Champions League final, which was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I'd like to talk more about some football, some football, and some upcoming videos. Anything else we can really talk about? Uh, I know some people wanted me to talk about like college football while that whole thing was going on. And I know 
college football is like the biggest American sporting thing that I'm just not into. I think college football might be, it might be more popular than like even baseball. It might be more popular than the MLB. Some people can even argue it's better than the NFL, but uh, I'm just not really a big fan of college sports in general. Besides March Madness, love March Madness. Other than that, I don't really pay too much attention about college sports. And uh, uh, Michigan actually ended up winning the national champion game, uh, 34 to 13, against the Washington Huskies. And I think the Washington Huskies head coach just recently jumped ship and is now the head coach of Alabama because Nick Saban retired, which is crazy. People argue him being the, the greatest college football head coach. And then we also had Bill Belichick recently retire. Probably the greatest NFL head coach. Man, you know what's really crazy is that in this lifetime that we're in right now, we've seen at least my demographic of people. Of course, there's people out there who have seen more than that, but we've seen arguably the greatest basketball football, football head coach, college football head coach, maybe, well, definitely, um, well, maybe the, 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 the best, I could say, I don't want to say greatest, but the best MLB player in the MLB now. There's like so many goats um, happening right now. You can even see the goat of football with Messi. This like, the last like 20 years of sporting history has just been maybe the greatest of all time, like LeBron, Brady, Belichick, Greg Popovich, um, Messi, maybe now with Otani being an LA Dodger, who knows what could happen with that team winning a couple of, uh, a couple of, uh, you know, things, a couple of rings, a couple of pennants or whatever they call it there in baseball, but it's insane. We are, we are blessed in the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest era of sports, the nineties. Cool. You got Jordan, um, some other really great players in, in the 90 for, for football and things like that. But this era of like the 2000, 2010s going into the 2020s is, I don't think any era maybe in, in the history of sports will be better than this era. Then again, I'll have to see when I'm like 40 years old and see there's the next LeBron and the next this guy and the next that guy. But this era is crazy. Anyways, college football is finally done and over with. Um, college basketball is going on right now, which I guess we could talk a little bit about. Um, there's hockey going on right now, which I guess we could take a look at just like the leaders in the standing for hockey, which again, I'm not really too crazed about. But right now, uh, the Bruins are actually first in the Eastern Conference over teams like the Panthers, the Rangers, the Flyers, the Hurricanes, the Maple Leafs, and the Red Wings. The Lightning, though, kind of struggling. I know they've always been like a very good NHL team. The Lightning going down there in the 8th, 8th seed. Last place team are the Senators. Where are they from? I think they're from Canada, right? They're from like Ottawa or something like that. They are the last place team in the NHL with a record of 15 and 23. Yikes. Uh, And then in the Western, 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 Western Conference, we have the Canucks. In first place, wow, really the Canucks, that's interesting. The last time I checked, it was the Golden Knights, and that was forever ago. Sorry, I keep burping for some reason. Uh, But the Canucks are the number one team in the West with the Jets, the Avalanche, the Stars, the Golden Knights, my favorite team, also alongside with the LA Kings, who are right below them. Um, The Predators, the Oilers, the Kraken at nine. And then the last place team is still... The San Jose Sharks. They have been bad for quite some time now, but not as bad as the Anaheim Ducks, who are a team I can't wait to have a nice comeback. I'll be rooting for them during their during their comeback. But um, yeah, uh, there's still a handful of more months of NHL play to be had. But maybe when the, the playoffs come around, I'll talk about the uh, playoffs for the NHL. And yeah, that's all I can really think about. Um, I know some people wanted me to talk about, um, like Formula One, wanted me to talk, um, like boxing, combat sports, UFC, but, um, I don't even know if there's like a, 
um, sort of a big fight that's supposed to be happening sometime soon. I guess you guys can let me know if there is, and I'll talk about it in the next video if there's one coming up that sort of uh, far out. I would definitely love to know, love to know. I guess one thing we take a lay very, very, very quick look at is maybe the AP, the AP, the AP poll for, um, college basketball. Let's actually take a look at that really quick before I end things here. AP college basketball. Top 25 teams in college basketball. Um, let's see. Number one right now is actually UConn right now. Top team in the country, which, um, is that true? Oh my goodness. Wow. UConn, yeah, that's pretty wild. Okay, I didn't know UConn was actually doing any, really anything this year, but it seemed like the other number one team in the nation. Um, then we have Purdue at two, Kansas at three, North Carolina at four, we have Houston at five, Tennessee at six. Um, my favorite team, the Arizona Wildcats, definitely having a pretty fall, fall, a pretty fall, fall, going from, again, the number one ranked team in the country, going all the way down to barely being a top 10 team. Kind of scary, kind of terrifying, but maybe that'll, that'll change. Uh, Duke now being a top 10 rated team is actually pretty cool. They definitely had a pretty good run right now. They have a record of 13-3, and three, which is actually pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, anyone else kind of looking like a big standout? Uh, not really. Um, FAU is the 23rd ranked team, Dayton's 21, kind of crazy there, BYU is a top 20 team, that's pretty significant, but a lot of teams that have kind of always in the mix are still in the mix, so nothing crazy happening there for college football, well, college basketball, but yes, springtime is kind of almost here, just gotta get through January and parts of February, then we can finally talk some March Madness, which I cannot wait. Yeah, guys, that is another edition of this long whisper rambling, and hopefully you've maybe fallen asleep or asleep coming back to watching the second half, the third half of this video. Um, thank you so much for watching anyways, and uh, yeah, lots to more talk about the next time. Probably the next time I hear from you guys for one of these videos, it'll be close to the All-Star Game, Super Bowl Sunday, a lot of very fun upcoming um, supporting events coming soon, so that'll probably be next time I see you guys. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for um, watching, watching, watching tonight's video. I love ya. Love ya, love ya. Love ya, love ya. Make sure, of course, you like the video. If you do like the video, again, these one-hour-long videos take a pretty significant amount of time, energy, and effort to do and get out to you guys, so a like on the video would be um, very appreciative. I really appreciate that. And comment down below anything else you'd like me to, I guess, whisper, ramble about in these videos, whether it is combat sports, F1, table tennis, <laughs> something like that. Definitely let me know in the, in the comments, or maybe just even what you think about the current events of the, of the sporting world. I would definitely love to know your opinion on that. And I'll be seeing you again.